always wanted to start a company and I've always wanted to build a business. Building a business, I believe, has an opportunity to make a big impact uh, on communities, uh, you know, your country, your wor the world. So Command Coffee, like most projects I start, it was just, it all started. Like I just kind of jumped into it and I didn't really know where I was going at first. Like, even though I didn't have any experience in serving coffee and in the coffee industry, I've been a loyal coffee customer for as long as I can remember. Um, so knowing like how, what I like and knowing what frustrates me about coffee, you know, were things that really propelled me for knowing that we were, we were going to be successful. Starting a small business is an adventure. A lot of times, your ambition can reach higher levels than your logic, and that can often be scary because there's a lot of uncertainties and a lot of unknown factors. But at some point in time, if you really want it, you gotta go for it. You have to take that leap, learn along the way, and have faith in the process. And Denny Heller, did just that. He's going to share with us his journey, his story of him taking that leap and pursuing an idea. My name is David Gibson, and this is the Quest series where we share the stories of small business owners. And again, we have the opportunity to sit down with Danny Heller of Command Coffee, where he shares with us how this idea of starting a coffee shop evolved. He talks about his mental makeup, as well as he shares some very important advice that he would give to any aspiring small business owners. So please sit down with us and join the conversation that I have with Danny Heller. Brother, great day to you. Great day to you. Excellent, man. I am extremely excited again to dive into your story and to learn more about your journey. Um, as of, what was it, December 18th? Oh, yeah. So we actually opened our doors December 9th of okay. 2020. So pretty hot pretty pretty deep into the covid pandemic i like got yeah. close to the peak uh we for better or worse opened our doors okay okay and we're going to get to that sure you know of course sure. the pandemic is a oh. conversation in itself sure uh but really i want to go back to that moment when the seed or the idea really was planted in your mind of the vision of command coffee hmm. where did that come from uh, so I can't know. I don't know if there was one singular moment of when Command Coffee came into being, uh, but there were definitely some key moments that built into it. Command Coffee developed 
uh, throughout 2020 with like where we are now. Uh, but one of the one of the things that has propelled me is I've always wanted to start a company, mm-hmm. and I've always wanted to build a business. Uh, building a business, I believe, has an opportunity to make a big impact uh, on communities, uh, you know, your country, your wor- the world mm-hmm. as a whole. So it, it really started with uh, learning more about real estate and learning more about um, investing and saving money. I had been a few years out of school and was working as a medical sales rep. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, started having a territory in Indiana and was just saving money and putting away money and learning more about investing. Um, but what it really started with was just calling um, vacant properties here in Indiana to see, you know, like what it would look like to either buy or lease that property. Uh, so Command Coffee, like most projects I start, it was just, it all started. Like I just kind of jumped into it and I didn't really know where I was going at first. Uh, but I started calling people and learning more about investing and learning more about real estate. And somewhere along the lines, it clicked for me that coffee was where it was going to be. Hmm. Yeah. So, you know, to, to kind of back up a little bit, uh, I had been a, I had had a small, small business helping people write resumes uh, just out of school. It was called like one page consulting. The idea of like helping people, like get everything onto one page, like whatever you're doing, like let's synthesize it to one page. Um, but I, I quickly realized that there was a lot of time that would have to be put into each resume, um, as well as just like the overall market. There weren't that many people who like constantly biting at the bit to get their resume written. Mm-hmm. Uh, so my idea and my pitch to some of these uh, real estate brokers trying to get into like a property was uh, we're going to have a coffee shop that also sells resume writing services. Mm. The idea was to be like, let's just have an item on the menu that says like resume consulting service. And that would be a way to kind of promote this resume writing business that I had started. Um, And some brokers reached out, they've responded. They said, this is an interesting idea. Send me a business plan. Mm-hmm. And I had no business plan. I didn't really have like anything consolidated at that point. Uh, so that, you know, people that I had been working with, uh, they kind of like pushed me to that next step. Mm-hmm. Um, so like them reaching out for a business plan kind of forced me to start actually putting together a business plan right. and thinking about it and doing research about, you know, what this might look like. Uh, so as, as anyone who's been to Command Coffee now knows, you know, we have nothing to do with resume writing today. Uh, we abandoned that idea, or I abandoned that idea um, with, you know, some guidance from others. But, you know, I really want to maintain the mantra that, you know, propelled me with helping people write resumes, which is like, you know, people have an opportunity every day to improve themselves. And people have an opportunity every day to take steps towards achieving their goals or setting out to what they want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I really wanted that like fabric of what pushed my interest in helping people write resumes into like, you know, the culture of command coffee mm-hmm. where like allowing people to take steps towards a better life yeah. and achieving their goals. Yeah. So that was like a little bit of the high level, like synthesis of where command coffee was going to start. Um, and then a lot of it was like finding the right location and just like looking for somewhere that would be a good coffee shop that would kind of make this idea come to life. Okay. So if I'm understanding you right, Danny, like you get into this industry with limited knowledge. Yes. No experience. Yes. And you just went head first. Head first. I think jumping in is the best way to force you to learn. Mm. Um, Definitely a great way to learn. Uh, Would I have done things a little bit differently? Absolutely. Uh, I think the the complexities of plumbing and water uh, would have been a really good thing for me to know before jumping in. But at the same time, the best way to learn is to, to get started. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've always been a big coffee enthusiast. Uh, one of the reasons why Command Coffee is open so early 
is because when I was in the field selling like medical device, medical supplies, uh, I often needed to be up really early to in service for nurses. And there really weren't any coffee shops open um, when I'd be traveling. Like I didn't really have any options, which is totally like a, you know, first world problem. Like there's coffee in the hotel lobby. Yeah. But at the same time, there's like nurses and doctors that have like long shifts. So they need to be up early every single day. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it's, it'd be nice for them to be able to like get a strong, good cup of coffee when they need to be up really early. Yeah. Um, so that was one of the things that like I knew we could do well and I knew we could offer people. So like, even though I didn't have any experience in serving coffee and in the coffee industry, I've been a loyal coffee customer, uh, for as long as I can remember. Um, so knowing like how, what I like and knowing what frustrates me about coffee, you know, were things that really propelled me for knowing that we were, we were going to be successful. Yeah. So, so in essence, you, you put yourself in your customer's shoes as Absolutely. best as you could. Right. And you, you understood the challenges or the problems that many people have, um, or their interests or their needs aren't being met yes. as it relates to a coffee shop. Yes. Right. You know, and, and I tell many people that any money that is earned ethically is a byproduct of value creation, mm -hmm. right? You, you created some form of value by solving a problem. Yeah. And, and you brought that idea to the marketplace and now command exists. Mm -hmm. My next question to you is this, Danny. Um, you know, of course, starting out, uh, small business is difficult to launch. Mm -hmm. um, it takes work. It takes grit. Um, it takes faith. <laughs> it takes persistence. It takes yeah. time. It takes energy. But you started it right in the heart of a global pandemic, yeah. right? So, like, what were some of the challenges that you faced? Oh man, yeah, the challenges. I, there's there there were a lot. I mean, there were a lot of opportunities too, uh, but there were also many challenges. So the getting funding and like trying mm. to figure out how we were going to get enough funding to launch this. Yeah. Uh, we were exploring SBA uh, grants uh, or SBA loans, uh, but it first is very challenging as a uh, new business to get those loans because you need to show that you have experience in the industry. Um, additionally, uh, it was just, I was applying for loans in March when, you know, and I, everything just got like locked out. Yeah. Banks so, are like, taking a step back. Yeah, banks yeah. were like, this is too high risk. You know, there were some other other alternative uh, lending options that, you know, were available. Uh, but, you know, just at, at, it just became very difficult uh, trying to secure lend lending with a with a bank. Yeah. Um, so kind of took a different uh, route on that um, and just like stopped applying to banks for a little bit. And then just kept working on other things that I knew we could work on in the meantime, like mm -hmm. trusting that there was going to be a way and a means of getting it figured out. Yeah. Um, so just like, you know, once I got denied from like two or three banks very quickly back to back when COVID really started coming out. So I'm like, OK, not applying for any banks, like definitely not jumping the gun on anything mm -hmm. um, and just like being too quick on it. Um, so that was like, you know early in the process, just getting shut out very early on was very challenging. Um, but there were also opportunities because uh, when we found this location, for example, COVID, I'll back up, COVID happened um, after kind of some of the business plan had already been put together. We were looking at a location over on Michigan Road, which is now a Domino's. Um, it's like kind of by that studio movie grill. Um, okay. But we were negotiating and looking at that location and we submitted a drive-through proposal um, after we had had a few weeks of conversation because COVID had happened. Yeah. So we were like, how can we bulletproof this business? Um, but eventually like they like went with a different tenant, like yeah. they didn't go with us. So like there were a lot of like rejections on that front, um, but it opened up opportunities because it just, helped us we were we came in at a time where we were able to um, move command coffee into a direction that would be successful in the drive-through environment yeah so it 
forced me to be adaptable and think about how a business would be able to survive COVID. Mm. Um, so, but fast forward a little bit to opening, you know, since this location is a drive-through location, we were able to open as like drive-through only. Mm. So we weren't lobby only. So we were able to get the whole team trained and we were able to learn how to do the drive-through without also managing walk-in business. Um, you know, safety standpoint, you know, made for a, a pretty significant challenge uh, dealing with customers that didn't want to wear masks, mm. did want to wear masks. Um, but all in all, I mean, we made, we made it very clear that we were going to be wearing masks, um, you know, up until the CDC had, uh, we, we were very, we tried our best to follow the CDC guidelines. Mm -hmm. You know, speaking candidly, uh, we, we did have a period early on in, in being open where some of the team uh, had a, a team member did get COVID mm -hmm. and I panicked, you know, I did not handle myself well as a leader. I, you know, didn't know how we were going to be able to stay open and I was not as well composed as I should have been. Um, and that did stress some of the team members out. Um, you know, we unfortunately lost some team members because of that, uh, which led to a very, um, significant amount of reflection on my front, but after that, I learned like it's important to have like uh, a level of leadership within an organization that like you can talk to and like have that layer of feedback. So you're not just having, you know, feedback go back and forth with every single team member. You know, I wasn't always the best leader, uh, especially when like a team member had gotten exposed to COVID. So that whole thing like really took me a step back. Um, and so that was that was a big learning moment for me. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, the the pandemic, I think, in so many ways, um, really helped each and every single one of us reflect mm. um, and identify who we are, our values. I mean, it, it assisted us in growth in so many ways. I, I love the fact how you expressed really just your awareness of improvement as yeah. a leader. Right. Communication. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. that that is a key quality as a leader to be aware of how you can improve and how you can be better uh, for your team to lead with the mission that you have and the goals that you're aiming to achieve. That's phenomenal. I want to kind of backtrack just a little bit where you were talking about really getting started getting with Command started. Coffee, right? Yeah. And you were highlighting how, you know, you got rejected a couple times. Yeah. And and that's a part of the small business journey. That's a part of the creator's journey, right? When you're aiming to do something new, you're aiming to bring something new into the marketplace. Uh, you've got an idea. As the mic is moving here. You've got an idea. Um, you're going to get rejected. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not you going are. to be approved and accepted by everyone. Um, and through your persistence, continuing to knock, we now are sitting inside of Command Coffee. You know, what would you say was something that you did to help you kind of navigate that rejection and, and really stay determined to bring this idea to life. I think one thing that really kept me going was when I gained an understanding of how big this market was and how big this opportunity was that we were playing in. Hmm. Um, I think knowing that we were playing in a big market and we have the opportunity to make a splash in like the retail coffee market really excited me. I just, I knew that it was like just a numbers game. And it was, w there's such a big industry built around coffee mm -hmm. and it's a hyper local market. So if you can find a good spot then, and you can treat people well, you can have a good product. You know, I knew that the, the market would support us. So having faith in the market and having faith that you could succeed in that market was was big for me because I knew that it was a big opportunity. Yeah. And that so that kept me going, but also just your support system. Mm. So like having, I have a mom and dad who do support me and care about me. And I have a few friends that I went to school with who are, we're all passionate about business. So those, those things really helped me is like having a few key friends that I could talk to um, really helped me. And like knowing that it's 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 you know for better or worse the the cards aren't stacked fa the cards aren't stacked evenly for everyone you know mm -hmm. and I think that's something that I need to deal with is that you know I came from a 
background of privilege. Mm -hmm. And I came from a more privileged background than many people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, do I just sit on that privilege or do I try and acknowledge it and at least be upfront with it? I don't ever think I don't ever think I would be a fully self-made person. I have a family who has supported me. My grandpa had started a business when I was well before my time and he put away money for us to go to school, you know, get an education and he put away money for us to go and get a secondary education as well. You know, it didn't it wasn't enough money to to start a business like this, but it did provide me with the foundation to establish a base. And it was certainly enough to be leverage um, for getting a loan. Yeah. So having having that background allowed for me to um, authoritatively communicate with landowners, and I was able to to you know leverage my um, work experience as well as like you know my family for you know having um, authority at the table. For anyone that's starting anything, is they need to understand what advantages they have and what support system they have that can help them get off the ground running. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a, a key group of friends, a, a uncle, a brother-in-law, whoever it might be, um, is you know establish those um, family members or, or friends, but don't treat them any differently than you would you know any other kind of lender, any other kind of um, investor, because, you know, one day you will not be able to, if you want to continue to grow your business, you're going to need to be able to, you know, go up against the, a, any credible investor, any credible lender. Um, so you got to know your stuff. You got to know your stuff. Yeah, you got to know your you numbers. Ha you have to know your stuff and you can't, you can't think of it as like anything but yeah. a, a legitimate, um, lender. So I don't remember exactly how everything kept going forward because we did get denied very early on. I think knowing that I had that base that I could use as leverage with banks, I knew that there were other banks out there still, which kept me moving forward. Um, and I think very early on, we found this location and this location just felt right with me immediately. Like I knew this was a good spot. Um, and I met the landlord pretty early on, John, and he, him and I just hit it off. He really wanted, he was really passionate about the idea of helping someone start a business. He liked the idea of Command Coffee. Um, so he was one of the early people that um, I pitched Command Coffee to. Uh, and we were able to negotiate a, um, a lower base rent in order for like, to get like a lower base rent in addition to percent rent on sales over time, which really helped us getting started because, you know, we needed time to grow our business. Yeah. Um, but I think... Improve the, the concept. Yeah, improve the concept. Yeah. And, you know, after I sold the idea to John, and I say sold, but after John bought into the vision, is yeah. a better way to say it, you know, he connected me with um, the person who he knew at Stockyards Bank. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I mean hey, I'm sorry to cut you off. Please, but I mean, please, even, please. Even, even with using that word sold, right. you know, as it relates to you pitching investors you know that's your very first customer right is is the person that's going to invest in your idea um you need to make sure that you are that they are bought into the idea first um and and they're the ones that believe in the concept because that's where you're going to get your funding mm -hmm. uh, so i love the way that you put it kind of sold the vision to them you have to be an ambassador of that vision because if you don't believe in it right it's going to be hard for someone else to yeah. believe in it <laughs> Yeah, I really had to like bring the energy to that call. I remember following up with him and sharing my enthusiasm with him about like wanting to make a deal and like doing what we would need to. I remember like I treated it just like any kind of sales call, following up with a customer and like really building on that relationship. We talk weekly, if not by, if not like more than once a week. Um, you know, I called him when I was going to pick up Core Life today, just okay. to like update him on the business, let him know how things are going. So he really is. I know I pay him rent, so there's that. But there's the mentorship aspect. There's the mentorship yeah. aspect of it, um, and he, like I said, connected me with Stockyards, and you know that was where, you know, we I went through the whole process of applying for an SBA with them. Okay. Um, and I like went through the whole business planning, put together all the finances on that, 
and like went through a pretty rigorous process of you know making sure all of our pro forma and projections aligned um, and made sense yeah um, so ultimately did get approved uh, to get an SBA loan through stockyards which was a really gratifying feeling knowing that like I was able to get this started without, you know, or with, with a limited silver spoon. Yeah. You know, I think that's really important for me. And that's something I really try hard to deal. I try to deal with is like, how do I, how do I help inspire people to achieve what they want to achieve, build businesses when like here I am sitting with like a silver spoon, if you will, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's something I'm, I'm still trying to gain an understanding of. Uh, of how we can equalize the playing field and how, um, you know, I'll ever consider, you know, it's just like something I'm still trying to figure out Yeah, is I would never even, even had a seat at the table if it hadn't been for my grandfather uh, and my parents like supporting me and like, you know, helping myself and my siblings and my cousins, you know, and so it's, it's not a fair fight. Yeah. And I, that's, that's the reality of it. I just I think it, it starts with really as you're sitting at the table making room for more. Yeah. Um, and and you're doing that well. Um, I know you're you're very vocal about equality, mm -hmm. Black Lives Matter. Yes. Um, doing things in the community to empower uh, individuals, and and that's where it starts. You mm -hmm. know, as you're on or sitting at that table, you know, providing access, providing exposure, uh, providing insights and resources to individuals that may not be in a position to take advantage of those things. Uh, so Danny, you you talked about how, again, you stepped into an industry that you really had no knowledge of, uh, no experience in. In essence, you you stepped into an industry with blind, blindfolds on. Um, and you, you took some time to research it. Um, you know, you, you found mentorship and some guidance and you saw the problem that you're aiming to solve but what would you say is something that you wish you had known when you stepped into opening up and launching Command Coffee? But one thing that I wish I had done, I know like I talked earlier about my, like putting yourself in an environment where you need to be able to, you know, you know your core strengths, but that, that's not where the conversation stops because when you start a business, you need to be the technician. You need to be the entrepreneur and you need to be the manager. Yeah. You need to be all three. And like, I might love being the entrepreneur, but most of the time, what you need to be is the, either the technician or the manager. So don't be afraid to get into the down and dirty and understand the technical details of your craft. I bet you, you know, you know the details of these audio equipment mm -hmm. and like, you know, the details of the, the video technology that you're using. You know, if you are afraid or you don't think that it's up to you to learn, it's really going to hinder you. Yeah. You know, we relied on a plumber for a long time, but things really started improving when I, myself and Andy, I have not talked nearly enough about like the impact of having a team, by the way. Yeah. It's a team effort for all this stuff that we've talked about. It's not just been me. It's been a, a team effort for sure. Yeah. But taking the time to understand and gain technical capacity is so important. And I think I slept on that for too long. Um, but now, like now it's like we have all of our different operating, man all of our different technical manuals stored in our operations drive. So like under repairs and maintenance, every piece of equipment, we know all the different part numbers um, and all the different components that go into these pieces of equipment. Yeah that I thought like, oh, I'll just have a technician handle this, or, oh, we'll just have a plumber handle this. Yeah. But that, that hinders you from really being able to take command of your day. I like that. Yeah, it yeah. Really, it, but it, it hinders you from being empowered with understanding what's going on. Um, so that's one thing I would have done differently is, is read the technical, the technical um, requirements more detailed, and also just like really read the operating manuals like cover to cover. Like no, just knowing your business like the back of your hand, right? You know, being detail oriented and understanding every role and every position. Have you read uh, the E Myth? Yeah, that's e -Myth did you by hear Michael the, Gerber. The three, yeah, I, I caught the reference. Yeah, that's exactly. You know, by right. the way, for all the small business owners, creators, entrepreneurs, that is a must read. Michael Gerber, E the E Myth. Yeah. 
Um, a phenomenal book. It will definitely help you structure your business in a way where you're not working in your business. You can work right. on your business and in a position to scale, right. uh, scale effectively and successfully. So before we wrap it up, yep. okay, just a few more questions. So many questions I want to ask you, but sure, because sure. of you know the the uh, essence of time, right? I want to ask you this very specific question. So you're conversing with me, mm -hmm. Mr. Gibson, D1. D1. I am this individual that has a goal. I've got a dream. I've got this vision, right? Yeah. Like something that I want to do. I have this concept that I want to build. I maybe want to start my own business. Okay. I maybe want to start my own side hustle. Sure. But I'm afraid. Mm. I'm doubting myself. Mm -hmm. I'm hesitant. I'm apprehensive. I keep putting it off. Mm -hmm. What would you say to me? What's the worst that could happen? Mm. What's, what's worst case scenario? Yeah. What is it? Because at the end of the day, what's something that can never be taken away from you is the learning that you get from doing this experience. Do you have one friend? Do you have one friend? If you fall flat on your face and you're completely out of money, completely out of your job, is there one friend you could crash on their couch with until you figure it out? What's the worst case scenario? You know, there are people living out of their cars. You know, do you have who? What's your support system like? Is there anybody who would be there to help catch you if you fall? And if the answer is yes, like, you know, you're learn. You have an opportunity to learn so much by going after what it is that you're looking to do, and no one can ever take that away from you. Uh, and pri prioritizing that learning, you know, what's the worst that can happen, right? Uh, so trust the skills that you have and trust what it is that you're able to create. Um, and not to say, not to motivate you or what, but they're taking, there's, a, there's a, a quote that has always inspired me. There's a lot, I like quotes, but taking action doesn't always lead to, res taking action doesn't always lead to happiness, hmm. but there is no happiness without taking action. Um, and it always seems a lot more difficult. And I still tell myself this, like, I still am afraid by so many things um, that like we have to do with the business, with growing it, you know, it, that, that fear will never go away. The, the context of that fear just changes. So just by getting started is the best way to start building it. Yeah. You don't need to build it all in a day. Rome wasn't built in a day. Yeah. Just get started, pick up the phone and call someone. That's, you know, just pick up the phone or do what it is that you, something that you can do to get it started. It's, it's never as bad as you think it's gonna be. It's, it, it's ne probably never as good as you think it's gonna be either, but it's never as bad as you think you, it can be. So why let that fear that you have, that apprehension that you have, hold you back from something that could be really awesome? Yeah. But that fear will come back. So know what's gonna ground you and keep you pushing forward um is what i would say yeah i love it man don't allow the fear of failure to be greater than the excitement to win my last question for you danny is this brother yeah what are you chasing as we're talking about the quest everybody's after something if you can sum it up what are you chasing what wakes you up in the morning so i would love to scale command coffee to be a household name throughout the US. And what I'm chasing is to bring back the in-store experience to the, you know, the national coffee market. I want to be a company that can audit Starbucks and can remind them of why they came into being in the first place. What was it that really got them going? Because they've forgotten. Hmm. And so what I see as something that I'm chasing is to build a business that has a substantial impact on the world and to build a company. Like I don't think of us as just being a coffee shop. I see us as being a, a company and a, a company that can make a huge impact on the world yeah. and leaving a legacy that you know, we're proud of, of what we've done. Um, so, so I'm chasing, I'm chasing a, 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 the idea of what 
building a business can can do for um, you know the world and the impact it can make. Um, I, I think that's the biggest thing is impact. You know, it's like a good question you ask is you can ask people is like if money weren't an issue, what would you be doing, right? What what would you be doing if money weren't an issue? Well, the answer is I'd be building something. I'd be creating something new. You know, I would be, and I'd be building something. And I think that's a big thing is like, I'm passionate about building this company and seeing where it goes. Um, so that's, but you know, I don't have it all figured out. One step at a time. One brother. step at a time. That's One exactly step at right. a time, man. The journey of a thousand miles begins with a single, single step. step. Right? Uh, <laughs> so with all of that being said. All that said. How can the family connect with you? Oh, man. You can. Um, wow. That's a great question. Well, my cell phone number is. <laughs> you don't have to give out <laughs> your cell phone number. Man. No, I, that's a great. That's a great question. I guess you could. Uh, Instagram, Insta Facebook, Instagram. Facebook. What's, the, what's the handle on Instagram? Uh, well, Command Coffee Indie okay. is our business profile. I guess like social media. I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, but I don't know what the best way to can. I'm not good personally on social media, <laughs> like social media. And that's maybe something that you and I could like work. I could like use your help on. Yeah. On like where I'm at personally, but command coffee indie on Instagram will be the best way to connect with what's the website, uh, command coffee.com. And you offer, you offer, you can purchase coffee directly from the website yep. as well. Right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, have patience with the website. Uh, it is not the, you know, it's not Google, but you can purchase coffee on the website, um, you know, and you can always message us on the, directly on the website to find out what coffees we have in stock. We have some new premium coffees that okay. I'm excited to roll out. I haven't updated the website yet, but absolutely, we ship nationwide uh, to, to the family, if you will, um, and would love your Bad reviews, good reviews. We just need the feedback that we can. Just honest feedback. Honest feedback. That's right. Uh, about our website experience, you know, what it is about, you know, if we're connecting with people out of Indy, we need to grow the website experience. We need to make it better. So yeah. how can we improve that? But yeah. So there you have it. Family, connect with my guy Danny here uh, via Instagram at Command Coffee Indy. That's, That's right. right. Command Coffee. I-N-D-Y. Because we're here. Command Coffee. I-N-D-Y. I think it's Command Coffee on Facebook. Got you. And then, yeah, commandcoffee.com uh, is where you can find our, our menu for this store. And then our beans online can be purchased, too. Got you. And applying. You know, we're, we're definitely looking for team members to help us be more staffed. So Always looking for great people. Here in Indy, team members. <laughs> well, Danny, brother, man, it's been a great pleasure you learning too. more about your journey. Thank you so much. And, and hearing the story of Command Coffee. And I'm uh, loving, again, the community focus, mm. purpose-driven, legacy-driven. Mm. So we're definitely looking forward to the great things that are, are to come for you and the entire Command Coffee team. Yes. Um, the remarkable impact that you're going to make with anticipation of some great things that are going to unfold. So keep up the great and phenomenal work, brother. Hey, and you again, too. appreciate you your too. time Thank and you. your insights that you share. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, it's been a pleasure. I love connecting with you. And I hope that we can continue to, you know, have jam sessions like this. Sure. And, uh, you know, I know that you're doing great work here. So Excellent. we'll stay connected. Excellent. Appreciate you, brother. Well, family, there you have it. My guy, Danny, with Command coffee we appreciate you guys tuning in in the meantime be effective be successful live with some passion and most importantly be powerful peace and then how do i do that in a way that i can nourish and provide an opportunity for people that makes them feel good about what they're doing and not feel like they're a commodity like i was in the corporate world um, and that was kind of where Graves Co. came from. We're going hard in the paint. Ain't nobody gonna stop us. The only way we going out if you pull out the choppers. All that slander and your hate will propel us like helicopters. We serve it well. Here's the appetizer. Call it toppers. 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 Yum.